Hello all. Since the dawn of time, there has always been joy to be found in silly rivalries. No matter what your education level is, your class, your wealth, or your age, we all ask questions like, who would win? A big alligator or a big shark? David versus Goliath? My dad versus your dad? Freddy versus Jason? While many fighting games leaned into fantastical speculation like Soul Calibur's edition of Star Wars characters, or Mortal Kombat adding the Terminator T-800 and Spawn, only one game has held court as king of the easily accessible crossover multiplayer, Super Smash Brothers. But a new challenger is making a play for the throne. These days, with most multiplayers or co-op being exclusively online experiences, the ability to sit down and have old couch time with friends and family have been limited to a couple of camps. Fighting games and racing games. Oh, and Mario Party, which you can always count on to be a bloodbath because you somehow skated by until you stole a buttload of stars from Grandma, so now the loafers are off and it's throwdown time. Many gamers can point with bittersweet fondness to a time they were trounced at a fighting game in a group setting as their introduction to gaming. Additionally, the crossover appeal of including intellectual property from other games and media can help bring in new eyes that otherwise wouldn't have picked up a controller and gave us our first glimpses as merged universes before literally every single movie was part of an extended universe. Remember beating the clown white off Joker with Scorpion? Oh. Fighting games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Tekken, and Soul Calibur are absolute blasts. But because they have a bit of a learning curve, they can be inaccessible to someone that hasn't put a lot of time into the genre. Enter Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers was the rare gem that offered a chance for complete newbies to play the same game that would also allow more experienced players the ability to customize their experience to play at a professional level. This crossover of Nintendo titles was the formula you now see chased by other titles like, let's say, the underrated PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale to get that same bottle of lightning over and over again. Super Smash Bros. has kept this feature fresh by branching out beyond its own already extensive roster of characters to include fighters from franchises spanning Bandai Namco, Sega, Konami, Square Enix, Microsoft, Atlas, and more there really hasn't been anything quite like it with the same cross-generational appeal until now. Who is storming the gates of the status quo? Who is brave enough to try to enter the pantheon of crossover fighting game greats? It's, it's, this guy, uh, SpongeBob. Okay, so this must be the Kirby of the operation. Soft, squishy, but deadly in the right hands. Now, there's a chance I might not be as familiar with the Nicktoons lineup, but let's take a look at the rest of the roster. Old Uncle Adam can be hip. Who? Who are any of you? Okay, I admit, I'm showing my age here, because while I was alive in the 90s, I wasn't a child during that point. But I'm sure this roster holds some appeal for millennials to Gen Z, so let's take a look at who we have confirmed. First up, characters I do recognize. From Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we have Leonardo, Michelangelo, and April O'Neil. All right, I love the turtles, and firmly believe you can tell more about a person based on what Ninja Turtle they think they are than what their zodiac sign is. Pro tip, no self-declared Mikey is actually a Mikey. They're just loud at parties. Next up, we have Oblina from Ah! Real Monsters, which the kitties are sure to either recognize or develop new untapped nightmares from. I think she's a candy cane with a mouth. I'm not entirely sure. There's also Reptar from Rugrats, because as all millennials learned this year, none of the babies should ever leave a 2D format, as they immediately stray into upsetting bulbous territory. More from the realm of things I recognize, we have Ren, Stimpy, and Powder Toast Man from the adored cartoon series made by a deeply gross man, knowledge of which has made the taste of Powder Toast turn to ash in all of our collective mouths. But hey, there's Hey Arnold, with no Arnold, just Helga. Hey, Helga. That makes sense, and she's the bruiser of the show, I guess. And at least both cat and dog of Cat Dog are here, because separating the two would be far less lighthearted fighting game and more traumatic stuff of horror. There's Danny Phantom, who I can only assume by the character model is some kind of K-pop star. 
I'm 47. I'm doing my best here. Oh, hey, there's also Invader Zim, patron saint of teenagers with inky black hair that spend their free time smoking clove cigarettes while throwing lit matches at trains. Then there's Nigel Thornberry of the Wild Thornberries, which is good because let's be honest, anything that Tim Curry is in, he's the best part by default. Smashing. And for the last of the characters from things I've actually heard of, we have SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy. And then there's... Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. One plays guitar, there's a science one, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, there's cool antics. Ah, wacky hijinks. Okay, I got it. All right, sorry about that. I had to consult an actual child to figure out the rest of them. So, Lincoln Loud and Lucy Loud, the middle child and goth girl from The Loud House. Additionally, leaked but not confirmed is Ong, Toph, and Cora from the Avatar franchise, which I'm now learning has nothing to do with the James Cameron Avatar series, and I'll stop talking now before Avali kicks down the door because I think it has something to do with anime. Okay, so I might not be in the age range for having the nostalgic attachments to many of these characters, but I have to say, the fact that this game, unlike Super Smash Bros., is available on PC, making it even more accessible to fans, is pretty great. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is being co-developed by Ludosity, the fine folks behind the popular game Slap City, a very streamlined and impossibly fun fighting game. So obviously, it stands to be more than just the Smash clone we might be tempted to write it off as. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl will also have Wave Dashing, a mechanic familiar to those that got to experience it back in the glory days of Melee, but has since been missing despite fan demand from other games in the Super Smash Bros. lineup. Just like Slap City, it also has L canceling and dash dancing. This just keeps sounding more and more like an all around great fighting game. Plus, the game developers have mentioned on Discord that All Star Brawl will feature rollback netcode on select consoles. And if you don't know why that's a good thing, it just means that online play will be smoother. This is a feature that even some AAA games like, you guessed it, Smash, still lack despite how valuable it is to the online multiplayer experience. This is a good early sign if the game hopes to have any potential on the esports scene. All right, it probably has been painfully apparent to you that uh, my familiarity with the Nickelodeon channel uh, isn't, isn't great, uh, because most of what we were talking about, like I said, I was an adult, and if I was watching the channel, probably the FBI should have put me on a watch list. So I brought in people who uh, grew up with the channel and actually understand the importance and why this game seems to be get getting all these people all on Twitter, like it was another Space Jam or something like that. So I'd like to welcome Frost and Avali. Hello, young people. Wait, Sessler, am I going to be put on an FBI watch list because I'm a grown woman who keeps watching children's cartoons? You're already on that list, Avali. Yeah. Damn it, anime. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're just giggling with what they're seeing, so you shouldn't be worried at all. That's fair. Um, on that note, though, um, I was a little bit taken aback when this game got announced because, like, my Twitter feed was just filled with squeals of glee that I hadn't seen since, well, uh, Space Jam 2 got announced. Um, so... Having grown up with Nickelodeon, like how central and sort of part of your childhood are these characters that are featured in the game? You want me to go first? Obviously. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first. Go right I'm going to go first. As someone who has almost every single Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network theme song memorized and continuously playing on a loop in my head, like all of these cartoons and these characters are the reason why I turned out this way. Like when I was a baby, I was watching Rugrats. Um, I skipped over TMNT, but what was cool was that was part of like my mom's era of cartoons. And there are some cartoon characters who are in here that I vaguely recognize, but I understand that these are characters that are coming up from like my younger cousin's generation who's like 10 years old. So it's just like this wide range of Nickelodeon generations that are being thrown in here because I don't think people are gonna recognize Ren and Stimpy. Like we know who Ren and Stimpy are, but like the little kids are gonna come in and if they were to see a Ren and Stimpy cartoon, they're just gonna be like, oh my God, I don't even understand what this is. But when people like me and a couple of like my other degenerate friends see Gurr come up and start singing about tacos, cookies, or peace, we're gonna lose our shit at him. 
And that's why I'm excited for it. It's also just kind of putting a lot of animation history on a pedestal because this was kind of the golden age for a lot of cartoons growing up and we haven't really seen it now that things have moved away. Yeah, there's still cartoons. Like I still think that like Ben 10's probably still going. Ovily, yes, no, shake head. There was Ben 10 as a kid. There was Ben 10 as a teenager. I don't think it's still going. Maybe it's Ben 11 now. <laughs> ben 12. No, but I also think it's just cool to kind of see like a, a shrine or a temple being built to a lot of these characters uh, and that golden age of animation. It's funny, when I drive to work or bicycle to work, I go by the Nickelodeon studio and I just always look at the building and I'm like, ah, what always was and could have been but never is anymore. Like when was the last time that you got excited about a Nickelodeon show? SpongeBob. I, I think that's a really interesting point because you, both of you were getting a lot of animation that was kind of contemporary for you. Whereas, like, I, I have to say, my generation, I was actually feeding off of much older cartoons, like Warner Brothers stuff that could go all the way back to the 30s. Uh, there was almost nothing except maybe the Super Friends, uh, which barely functioned as animation. It was really like radio with pictures. Um, so I'm just going to express my envy that someone actually did something A PowerPoint for you. presentation as Godzilla just slowly yeah. moves out of the sea. <laughs> all eight frames of animation every half second. Um, now, uh, with, with, with this in mind, are there certain characters, just by virtue of them being that character, that you want to be maining as for us? Uh, I'm a big fan of Cat Dog, and as soon as I saw that Cat Dog was in the uh, the game, I was like, "Yep, that's the one." Or Helga from Hey Arnold. I think Hey Arnold, as I like the word that you use, is contemporary cartoon, especially talking about like almost modern day issues or a lot of emotional issues. I think Hair Arnold as a cartoon was like really deep and meaningful and impactful to me uh, as a childhood growing up. So, uh, Cat Dog or Helga. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's interesting. Now, obviously, obviously, all I learned from cartoons is explosives explode and anvils are heavy. Um, is, because of how you were brought up, is there any character you want to main as? Oh, yeah, like Frosk that's really touching about Hey Arnold and stuff, but I just want to clown on people as Patrick. Like, I'm hoping that his ultimate is just him slamming his entire house down, which is you a giant see. rock for people who don't know, just like on top of someone. Or like, what Frosk, what we're forgetting, what we're forgetting, Frosk, is that yeah. Avatar The Last Listen Airbender up. is under uh, Korra's in it too. Korra's in it too? Yeah, they had leaked screenshots of like the main uh, game and they showed uh, Aang and Korra. Do you think we're gonna get Toph? Ooh. I want Toph. But you can already see the age difference between Ovli and I. I think it's only like, what, four years, five years? I don't know anymore. Yeah, but the thing is, is I'm like, hey Arnold, and you're like SpongeBob. Like I had SpongeBob, but he was like, Almost just, I was almost just too old for SpongeBob, but I had a younger brother, so I still watched a shit ton of it. That's really interesting. So, I mean, I, I don't think I appreciated the fact that the game, in terms of the characters, really surveys a much longer period of time. I think I just kind of assumed that they made a bunch of cartoons once and then they just keep running them, you know, in repeats at infinitum. No, Ren and Sippy's much closer to like your era of cartoon. Yeah. Than no, and it they is used to, to run era. that. In all honesty, <laughs> they used to run that on MTV, which I was watching in college, especially this one episode where Stippy loses his fart, and that was considered too risque for that era of Nickelodeon, and so they decided to run it on MTV. They're owned by the high top. It's the same company. I, uh, <laughs> I just remember Happy, uh, Happy, Joy, Joy, where they're just smacking each other in the head yep. with hammers. And Powder Toast Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and 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 the uh, the the yak that shaves. Though I remember those three things. I, it, it's it's uh, I, I I I could go on. I love the animation. It's basically you know. an acid trip. Like that's that's what that yep. cartoon was. Exactly. Yeah. Um, on that note, uh, I guess. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of characters in this game. Um, I think that assuming the game is successful, that more characters will become available, or maybe they're already in the game and we don't know about them, like the Avatar people. Uh, is is there anything missing? That you know, uh, uh, I believe that you know you you, you want to see, you want to play as, you know, you're, you're you're feeling that you aren't whole yet. Oh, tons. Um, I mean, we've seen that we're gonna get Zim, but we don't know if we're gonna get Gur officially, unless there are some new leaked photos that I don't know about. What what? Adam Gur is this little dog creature that's lime oh. green. Put and oh. Zim is from Invader Zim, and he's an alien. I actually, I, actually I, 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 I do know who Invader Zim is. My godson reads the comic books. I had no idea it was a cartoon. There you uh, go. But yeah, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm up to, I'm, no, I'm not up to speak. Obviously, we need to speak his language. <laughs> I'm, okay, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, like X-Play editor, just throw Gur up right here. What? That's Gur. That's how wow. cute he is. Look at him. We can't, his Obviously, little we can't afford Gur. No, no, no. Frost, I mean, I, 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 I imagine, imagine... I love chocolate, man!
Yeah. I, I, I am somewhat more knowledgeable, yet no more happy. Um, Frost, we always have to ask this question. If the game is successful, <laughs> can it become an eSport? Uh, it's already going to be an eSport. So one of the big things that uh, has made the FGC or the fighting game community so excited for this game is the net or rollback note net code that's going to be implemented with the game. Now, net code is rollback net code is essentially how you make fighting games work online because one of the biggest issues of course is going to be the region and the delay between them and the inputs and when you're uh, a fighting game of this caliber you know a 45 millisecond delay is game changing to what you see on your screen versus the input that you're putting in but because they're using rollback net code everyone's super stoked this game and then it's on top of the fact that it is smash like that this is coming from a studio um, that already had a successful fgc title in slap city so they know that it's being made by trusted individuals and that um, I believe the studio's Ludosity. Ludosity has also been reaching out into the localized uh, FGC Discord community, answering a lot of questions. Um, it's theorized that they will have DLC support, so you're talking about different characters being added down or if they'll be unlockable characters. They've kind of been dancing around that one, but have shown a pretty sizable roster. But the fact that they have a strong title already to their name, that they're using the correct uh, net code to make it go and be an eSport, and that they're also heavily engaged in in the community and seem to have a good read on what the FGC want. Everyone's super stoked about the game. I mean, I, I, what, what's so interesting is, obviously, if this was out 10 more years ago, I don't even think we'd be talking about it because it's a, it, it's a licensed game based on a TV show, which is pretty much a death knell when it came to quality. Um, and I think I was even skeptical when I first heard about it because sort of Viacom and their properties, that's, you know, it's, it's not like, say, Marvel, which has really made an effort to have higher quality games with their licenses. This just seemed to come out of nowhere and it could have been an easy cash grab for, for, for novelty's sake. Uh, I guess, not, not, not that either of you should have better insight than me, but I mean, is, is this because of the nostalgia, but you're also playing to people who expect a certain quality of game, do you think that this is a harbinger of better licensed games you know, in, in the years to come? I mean, the way that I would initially think about it is when you look at like Smash's roster, I don't recognize half of the characters on that roster sometimes. No. Like when I was younger and growing up, I had never touched a Fire Emblem game. So I would look at Marth and Ike and I'm like, I don't know what game you came from, but I hate you. And there's a lot of people who have never touched a single Star Fox game, but still understand that if you're playing against a Fox or a Falco, you're going to lose. So I think that just like how, you know, some people may or may not recognize uh, like the little goth kid from one of these new Nickelodeon shows uh, that's coming up. They could still go like, holy crap, yes, I want to play cat dog and like bark and meow at someone at the same time. And I do think it's that nostalgia factor that's going to kind of like reignite the excitement for that nostalgia. And that's what's going to draw people in. I do think in terms of uh, overviewing like license, like if we're going to see now um, other like big IP holders throwing out their licenses to video games and having, you know, less shitty versions of like, I could play as Harry Potter. You could like, it's getting better where, uh, what, the new Harry Potter game is coming out. The Marvel games are getting better. Now you have Nickelodeon giving away their IP. So it does seem that we're kind of past that era that you're talking about, Adam, where um, playing as Tony Stark was just an awful experience because the gameplay was so terrible and it was basically just using this character as a mascot to try to boost sales. Um, I don't think that this game is going to be like the the turning point that shows like the big guys up in their, their boardrooms like, oh yes, we can give our IP away because it's the FGC and the FGC itself is a pretty small community. But I do like this idea that it is probably going to be a turning point alongside the new Harry Potter game that's going to be coming out, I think, later next year. Um, the fact that the Marvel games are getting more creative, giving away their IP to people like Square Enix, the new Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out. And now you also have a cast of Nickelodeon characters in an FGC title. Like, this one won't be the game that, that turns the page, but I do think it is coming where you see uh, a movie in a video game and you don't have to automatically assume that that game's going to be awful. Yeah. I, I, I think the other thing, as, as, as you were talking, that kind of occurred to me is the benefit to Nickelodeon as this game is streamed, as this game is played in a competitive environment, all that does is amplify and sort of reignite, as, as you said, oddly, interest in those characters. So who knows? Maybe there's like a Blu-ray set of, of what's, what's that? Like... Hello, Arnold. They launch hey, it with a Blu-ray of Hey, a Blu-ray of Hey Arnold, and like all of SpongeBob. It's just a giant marketing ploy. 
but only yep. old I mean, SpongeBob. It, 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 it sounds like from what you guys were saying that this might be a win-win. Speaking of win, um, this is the last time I'm probably going to be talking about Nickelodeon this year. Uh, but I would like to thank you, Avali, and thank you, Frost, for making this uh, actually uh, an educational experience that was bereft of pain. Thank you, Adam. I will teach you so many cartoons. I will break into your house, and I will force you to sit down and watch Angry Beavers with me for 24 hours straight. I'm, 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 I'm going to show you Bugs Bunny. I like Bugs Bunny. I do, too. There you have it. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl looks like it has more potential than meets the eye. It keeps the fun cartoon aesthetic that make Nicktoons such a fun world to explore and play in, assuming that you know anything about those worlds, while also recognizing it needs the bones of great mechanics to keep playing. I'm genuinely excited to see how gamers and the industry react to it. And it's nice to see Saturday morning cartoons come back in a big way. So what characters are you excited to play? And why? Well, let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, you know, hit that subscribe button. Now, if you're in a cartoon state of mind, you should definitely check out our Psychonauts 2 review. Also, bear in mind, the voice actor for Invader Zim and Raz, they're the same guy. If you prefer your cartoons by way of Japan, then I highly recommend you check out our review of Persona 5 Royale. All right, until next time. And also, can somebody under 30 just let me know who the hell Danny Phantom is? Thank you.